right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful guest with us this week on Disney Assembled. We have all the way from a galaxy far, far away, our new friend, Anthony King from Force Ghost Conversations. Bright Suns, Anthony, how are you? Hello there. Thanks for having <laughs> me on the show. It is a pleasure to be here. Big fan of Disney Assembled, and I am ready to rock. Awesome. That's so exciting. We love meeting new people. We love Star Wars. I love we... when the victims are enthusiastic. <laughs> and look, your show's fantastic. I listen oh, to you. every every week. I, I try to get my Star Wars news in, and there's a lot going on. And so, yeah, it's a good time to be a Star Wars fan, and especially with all the stuff going on right now uh, on Disney Plus and, and everything else. So, so why don't we start here, Anthony? I mean, you... And you can talk about Force Ghost Conversations and, and how long you've been doing that and what the inspiration was. But before you do that, why don't you share with everyone sort of your Star Wars story, how you became a fan, and um, yeah, just, just jump in there with, with that story. Absolutely, yeah. So my first steps, as they would call it, in Star Wars began somewhere around 1997 with the release of the special editions in theaters. My uncle took me when I was the ripe age of two to go see them. Uh, so those are kind of like where my beginning started. I really don't have a lot of memories whatsoever of that experience. And then a few years later, uh, I saw The Phantom Menace in cinema uh, on opening night and all that. And, you know, I kind of have vague memories of that as well. But more of my memories come from the Burger King toys that came along coinciding with the release of the film. So... You know, that was really where, like, the, the grassroots were laid. But I would really say my fandom really took off to, a, like, astronomical galactic levels in around 2002 with Attack of the Clones, which is now celebrating its 20th anniversary this year. I can't believe where the time has gone. But, uh, you know, that, I just fell in love with that movie. My uncle took, it, took me to see it uh, 10 times in the theaters that, that summer. And then, in fact, the summer after that, in 2003, I watched the film 300 times that summer. And that's not an exaggeration. I literally was mm. counting and then lost count after 300. So it's probably more. Uh, that's crazy. That you was, ran out of fingers and toes. It, I really so. did. That was you back when... You watched it more than once a day. Yes. At least more than once a day. <laughs> yes. Uh, back then... It was weird. DirecTV didn't necessarily have like the streaming wasn't at what it once was or what it is now. They just had like a channel that played the movie on loop. So if you had access to those like premium channels, and of course when Star Wars eventually came out, that was like its own channel at one point. We just had it on all day, so I just kept watching and watching and watching, and it was a great way to keep a an eight year old pretty satisfied back in the summertime. So. That was really where my fandom really took off and you know, I started getting involved, uh, you know, having fun adventures with my friends, acting out all the movies and stuff like that. Then the 2004 DVD release came out and that was really something that really took my fandom to new heights again. And the video games, of course, Battlefront 1, Battlefront 2 really were there and uh, Revenge of the Sith. When that came out in cinema, that was, you know, I, that's again... I went even further into the, in the stratosphere about Star Wars and how much it, it means to me. Uh, so as you can imagine, with Kenobi coming out, that was, you know, this is really near and dear to my heart uh, and all that. So, you know, I was I would say I'm a prequel kid at heart. That is really where my fandom came to be, and that forged the, the, the Star Wars fan that I am today. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, as the movies have come out, come out since then, you know, Force Awakens, Rogue One, all the other Disney properties that have come out. Uh, it's it's made me more excited than ever to be a part of this uh, this uh, community. And uh, you know, back in even 2003, I was having these great conversations with my uncle, who took me to all these fantastic films back in the day. We were having these really deep intellectual conversations about the themes of Star Wars and what it means to be a good person and what it means to reject the dark side and stuff like that. You know, and uh, that's really what I wanted to bring to the podcast realm because there's so much negativity out there, especially in the Star Wars realm for whatever reason, right? Uh, I just wanted to be a positive voice out there, geek out about the great things that are happening in the world of Star Wars. There's so much coming out in the future that's uh, to be excited about. Uh, there's always so, so much to look back at that is amazing, that still deserves like time and effort to talk about. And uh, that's really what we do weekly at, at Force Ghost Conversations. We're just there for cozy, deep dive discussions into everything galaxy far far away so whatever books comics movies tv shows animated series you name it we're, we're here to talk about it cool 
And about about how many episodes have you put out? I mean, I I, I don't count them when I listen to them, but how, when did you, maybe a better question is when did you start Force Ghost Conversation? So I started in November of uh, this this past November, so it'll be November 2021, and we're at our 35th episode, I believe, as of as of today, as of this well recording. Done. So we're we're, we're chugging along. <laughs> Very good. Good. Well, we we are a little bit further along that, but I'd say the hardest thing is for us is getting in the routine of doing it and sticking with it every week, even when you know it, it's really hard, right? Because some weeks she's very busy, I'm busy. Oh yeah. <laughs> we got other, I, she has a brother who does things, and so finding the time was really important for us to just be together. But then finding a time to record and edit and publish and do all that other stuff right and so yeah I, well congratulations on that i mean keep going i hope i hope it continues for for quite some time thank you um yeah you're welcome so star wars i mean we would consider our i mean i don't think our level of understanding of star wars is probably not where yours is but we are um uh i mean we're people who have seen all the films we've seen most of the television shows that have been put out, either, whether it's animated or live action now, um, haven't read any comics, <laughs> read a few books. You know, I, I read a few books, you know, a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, people have a tendency to under, maybe undervalue how much they know about certain things. And when you talk to people who don't really pay any attention to Star Wars, it's sort of, you're shocked at how little other people know when right. you are like, well, wait, a minute, how can you not like know this? Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> so I was like, I was talking about Obi-Wan with one of my, no, I was talking about Boba Fett with one of my friends, like the show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, so like this happened and this happened. And then, oh my gosh, like there was like, they were in the sand. And then <laughs> she kind of like, she was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Time for new friends. Most people yeah. <laughs> do not wake up at five in the morning to Go watch the show. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. did. We woke up for um, which show did we wake up for early in the morning? Moon Knight. Well, we went for Moon Knight. And right? we did that for we did for Obi Wan. Mandalorian. For and for the Mandalorian. Season finale. So you mentioned something really interesting about negativity, and I know when we do our show, and I know listening to your show, you're you, you're I think you have a similar philosophy, which is, you know, we don't do this to add bad vibes in the world right we do it to create more joy and have people maybe just smile a little bit more right and have fun with it Mm -hmm. but at the same time i think as a consumer of art it's okay to be critical without being cruel or or mean about it right so yeah yeah absolutely you know personal attacks on you know directors or actors or writers i mean I mean, I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, because, you know, obviously not everything is everyone's cup of tea, right? There are degrees well, if of... Well, you're not, if you're not you critical know. of, like, what you're watching, what you're intaking, like, nothing changes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like nothing, absolutely. Nothing can be different if you're not critical of it. And so, like, yeah, is there a lot of bullying that goes on in, I think, the Star Wars, like, especially, like, film fandom? I know, like, it's harsh, but I also think that it's, like, important that we have some sort of, like, what is the word I'm looking for? It's not boundary. It's, like, expectation almost. Right. That, like, so, like, this expectation, like, when it's not met, like, the fans are going to be the first ones to, right. to if, everyone, if everyone loves everything, then there's no motivation to try to do something better. Sure, sure. Right. You're you're entirely right on that. I mean, I think we've gotten to a point in our fandom where, where you're, I think you're alluding to this, Mimi, here, where, you know, when we when we speculate about the great stuff that is coming out, right? It seems like people are like, if it's not, if it doesn't happen exactly that way, then they like they go complete to the dark side and they start rioting and, and complaining about it. And then sometimes when it matches what they exactly wanted, they're like, it didn't subvert my expectations at all, and I was, uh, I could guess at what was happening at every corner, right? And you know, I think what we what we what I try to do at Forest Ghost Conversations is, you know. I try to appreciate, you know, the good stuff that is out there. You know, I'll sometimes throw a critical eye out at stuff. It's it's important to be, 
critical if something doesn't land with you and that's okay right i mean we're allowed to have our opinions and you know as long as they're respectful and we're not you know attacking the directors which unfortunately i've seen on twitter every now and then you know if someone has a really strong opinion that you know don't don't reach out to a creator and stuff like that there's so many people that work on these projects and stuff like that and they put their hard work and livelihoods into into this and it's this is like two years of their lives to put this thing together here so like the actions of one person aren't necessarily the, right. the work of the collective right right what was really cool about you know i was at star wars i was fortunate very fortunate to be at star wars celebration a few weeks ago and one of the i again i was very fortunate to have gotten the lottery to be at the lucasfilm showcase panel that first day and as a result of me being in that room they gave us tickets basically to go to the premiere that evening which they showed the first two episodes of obi-wan that night that's so and Yes, it, it was amazing. <laughs> uh, they they had all the cast and crew there and their family members and friends, and they were there to all celebrate and appreciate. So one of the really cool aspects of being there in that room was you, you would hear when like when, when the credits were rolling and, the, and someone saw their name or their, their friend's name or the family member's name pop up. They started cheering and applauding at random sections in the movie or, or in, the, in the show. And or if like a side character that they, they knew was in there and they were waiting for them to pop up, they started screaming and applauding. It was such a unique experience. Right. And I'm just like, those people put their hearts and souls into this thing. Uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to, to look for the good, the themes in this, what I can take away from this. Uh, and And really, that's just the approach that I've taken overall. I mean. But my philosophy in general is like if you like any aspect of Star Wars, whether it be if you think just like. Anakin Skywalker is a cool character, or Darth Vader looks like the, the look of Darth Vader is really cool, right? It's very menacing. Even if it's as like as as rudimentary as that. You love John Williams' score. You can hum the music, right? If you like any aspect of Star Wars, you're a Star Wars fan, in my opinion. I'm not gonna gatekeep people. I know there's a lot of people that like want to throw a top ten questions or top five question at you or pop quiz as soon as you mention, like, oh, I like Star Wars, and then they want to see if you're a true fan or not, right? Like that's not what we do here. We're here to expand the seats of the campfire, so to speak, at, at the Force Ghost Conversations table. Uh, so really, that's 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 kind of the approach that I take at the end of the day. Awesome. I think get, that's well. Really... Get, get rid of that pop quiz we're going to give him or later. <laughs> Just throw that one out. I think well, that's really helpful for people like me, who are like mid-tier Star Wars fans. Like, okay, you know more than me because you're older, right? I am, so yeah. like you, it really. Sorry, I like, stood in line forced... for a new hope. <laughs> Which yourself, before it was known as a new hope. Right? Force yourself Star to Wars, intake yep. all of that information. Right, right, right. Myself, I watch the movies and I watch the shows, but I'm not like totally engulfing myself in Star Wars. And like, I on a scale of one to ten, I put myself at like a five, maybe a six. Okay, you're probably at like a six or seven. Right. You know, you know the major characters and you know the basic storylines. I don't know, and like, stuff, I don't right? know the side plot lines. But too. you don't know the name of the blaster or the <laughs> model number of the X-wing fighter or whatever, right? But, but you like, know, if I said Lando Calrissian, you know who you know who Lando is. Right. right. And I think it's important that there's a space for those people who are not like all in but still really enjoy it because like there's a lot of like people out there that just enjoy things because they enjoy them, not because they want to like dedicate their whole lives to them. And there's also a lot of people on the flip side that are like, okay, but like, you're not allowed. And it, it just doesn't, it doesn't sit, right. it doesn't, it doesn't fit with me. Totally. So thank well, you for that. Like, you're welcome. Logic. You're always allowed at the, the Force Ghost Conversations campfire. You both are. <laughs> well, thank you. So you mentioned Obi Wan. Let's talk about that. That's a, I mean, Obi Wan just wrapped up. We're recording. I loved Obi Wan. I thought it was oh, so. Good. Me too. We're having this conversation. What on June twenty fourth? So Obi Wan literally, the last episode came out a couple of days ago. Um, general impressions from you, looking at it as a whole, what would you say? As a whole, I'm gonna say A plus. Uh, I mean, I, I did caveat at the beginning. I am I'm biased that the, the you know these characters, the actors involved, the the plot threads that they're continuing in this are very tied to that era of Star Wars that was so impactful to me and my fandom. I've heard on a on a, on a different Star Wars podcast, uh, Sky Talkers. I want to give them the credit for for noting this. Uh, they did a great job connecting these dots. But like they said, that Kenobi is a true sequel to revenge of the sith more so than a new hope is like it's it's very aptly placed in the middle between those two and if you're doing your rewatch of the series this is almost necessary to watch between 
uh, as you're going through your, your if you do the chronicle, chronological rewatch, which I do. Well, right, because it closes that emotional tie between that those two characters that obviously had that connection Definitely. that just kind of isn't really touched on again in any no. of the other films. It's just kind of like, okay, it's over, like, but closed. And it's like, it, it create to me, it created, creates like a plot hole with like the whole like Jedi, like being in touch with themselves and their emotions mm-hmm. and like what they're feeling and how it can affect their powers and their like connection to the world and the force. And so when you have this like, like okay, but Obi-Wan was just betrayed by a man who was his brother, who was his like Padawan, right? And so it's like, yeah what happened and like that real like this show definitely cleared that cleared the air for that absolutely and like what does that do to a person right like how did he just go to this planet live by himself in solitude and just think that everything was hunky-dory for 19 years and then he's all good to go and and a new hope right like right and like you're trying to tell me nothing happened to obi-wan in 20 years you're lying to me something happened to obi-wan and now we got to know what it was right like exactly he did he didn't just hang out around the cantina for 20 years right he he was doing some things (laughs) so we we enjoyed it quite a bit uh i i would give it an a and um (laughs) well but because there i mean we'll get into this i I mean i have questions i mean and, and not critiques but you know everything leaves room for more stories to be told. Absolutely. And you better tell the right story. Otherwise other things start to not make a whole lot of sense. Right. Mm -hmm. The truth is I really don't want to see Obi-Wan anymore. I I think Mm. if you give too much Obi-Wan being active Mm. and running around and doing heroic things, it lessens the impact of the old hermit that emerges mm. in right. a new hope. And so he had one last big adventure, but now he's going off in solitude to learn from Qui-Gon about the force ghosting and, and all the stuff that he, to finish his training, right. Yeah. In solitude. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, and I don't want to go too far because we'll talk about this right in, in today, but I, I'd give it an A. I thought it was, cinematically fantastic i thought it was very well done it didn't obviously there were no cheap shortcuts made um but we'll get in i know i'll let you give your grade and (laughs) but then we'll i think we should talk about some of the things we like and some of the things we still have questions about or things that we you know because when it was over or i mean i was i got weepy a couple of times in the last episode Mm -hmm. because it was pretty emotional right oh yeah but then it when it was over i was like well what are they going to do about this? Right. Mm-hmm. Cause how mm-hmm. does this get resolved? Because sure. they can't leave this open. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. So what was your grade, Mimi? I am not going to give it a grade. I'm done with school. It's June 24th. <laughs> um, Good answer. Good answer. It, I thought aside from all its nostalgia and its importance and filling in those holes and it's just sort of like iconic moment to it with like you know obi-wan you know back from 40 years like okay like he's back like whatever aside from all of that like i thought as a piece of art as a work of art it was a great show i thought it was really well done and like kind of going on a side tangent i was watching the third season of umbrella academy and the production quality with the special effects is like not great and, mm-hmm. like, that's how I felt about Stranger Things season four, season three, whatever, whichever with one we're on. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that's kind of how I'm feeling about Miss Marvel. But, mm-hmm. I, but with Obi-Wan, I didn't feel that at all. I felt like it was really meticulously done. And I yeah. enjoyed watching it, like, artistically. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think it was a benefit that I saw it in a kind of big movie theater with all these oh, people. Yeah. But my first takeaway after seeing those first two episodes, and even still after finishing the entire series is this is the most cinematic TV series I've ever seen in my life. Uh, right. This, you know, the, the book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian still feel they, they have that like gravitas of being cinematic in their own respects, but they still have that aspect of feeling like episodic in a way or serialized right. storytelling, right? It's the adventure of the week. Where's the Mandalorian go this week? Who does he meet with? Whereas 
this is a one through six part act story, right? Where this happens and this happens and this happens and it's got a bookend to it, right? It, it doesn't, you know, some aspects do call for, for more storytelling or maybe more questions to be answered later on in some avenue, shape or form. But for the most part, you got a full character arc from Obi-Wan from the beginning towards the end. And right. I'm all in no, on No, that's definitely like a great way to put it. It's not like, you're right. Like Mandalorian was like, okay, who's he going to meet this week? Like, yeah, yeah, there's this end goal of like getting the child where the child needs to be, but it's like, it's more like, okay, what's the what's the adventure? But, like, Obi-Wan, I think, had a really nice flow to it. Yeah. And, like, this is kind of a hot take, controversial opinion. Mm-hmm. I really like little Leia. I thought she was cute. And, like, we're going to get into, like, what the questions we had. But, like, kind of to... We had questions? Kind of, kind of, kind of like, head that off. Like, I want to see... Well, you mentioned it. You were like... <laughs> we're going to talk about the questions we we'll had. We'll talk oh, about... I don't have them written down. You had one. It's all anyway, my it's I want to see more little Leia. Like I don't really think I need their whole Luke and Leia's whole life story because honestly we know a lot about it and like how they were raised or whatever. But like I want to see it. Maybe a sure. maybe a, like little series. Maybe not even live action. Mm-hmm. Like I just think it would be really interesting to to see some of that if if it's even there. You know, like maybe they just maybe Leia just did have like a normal relatively normal <laughs> childhood until she was a teenager and then it all blew up in her face. But like I don't know. Yeah. That's but yeah, that was my take. <laughs> so, Andy, things that stood out to you, like big moments, you know, any particular... No, let him give his grade. He already gave his grade. He said A+. Plus. Okay. Oh, yeah, A+. Plus. You weren't listening in class earlier. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, it just maybe certain performances, moments, and then maybe some questions that you were left with, you know, when the series wrapped up. Sure, absolutely. So... I think let's start at the top here. Obviously, I think the biggest scene and most impactful to me scene to me overall was that last bastion fight between Anakin or Darth Vader and Obi-Wan, where Obi-Wan has cut a piece of the helmet off and you get to see the eyes of Hayden Christensen giving this exuberant performance of Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader still in the helmet, right? Like, this is why you bring Hayden Christensen back for this role, is to show this exact moment right here. Uh, I mean, just... And then, of course, Ewan McGregor on the other side, literally saying, I'm sorry, to the the thing that was giving him all this pause and trauma and stuff like that. Like, he's, he's literally been festering in this, like, guilt that he's had for the last 10 years or so. And to literally have that absolved of him right then and there... It allows that full character arc to complete that I was mentioning earlier, and he's he's a completely changed person after this, and he's allowed to basically heal the past and put that behind him. Uh, just that whole thing of here where, where Anakin, or Darth Vader, I should say, says to him, like, I am not your failure, right? Uh, you didn't kill Anakin Skywalker, I did, right? And just the way that that's uh, shot cinematically with the blue lightsaber turning in and then switching back to Vader with the, re- with the red right there. I mean, oof, that is gorgeously, gorgeously well done. Another great scene that happens just before that that really got me going emotionally was you know when obi-wan is underneath all of those rocks and what does he go to for his happy place he thinks about leia predominantly 80 percent of that time when he's thinking of something and then maybe 20 percent luke there but predominantly leia is the one that has this major impact on him that allows him to regain his faith in himself his confidence lift up those rocks and face vader one last time uh, those are some, some big standouts, uh, of course. Uh, I, I loved Reva's arc at the end where, you know, we now have this character that is, that chooses, again, to be a better person at the end of the day, right? She had that choice literally in front of her. She could have struck down Luke, but she doesn't. She chooses to be better. She chooses that she doesn't want to continue the cycle of violence that created her, basically, in a way. Uh, that was very impactful and powerful to me, and I, I, I can't wait to see where her story goes on. So maybe that's a question that we have later on is where does that go? But that's an interesting story beat for Star Wars in general that I know has been a criticism of Star Wars in the past where it's like, what do these characters do when they do these heinous acts in their life, right? So a Darth Vader, uh, a Kylo Ren, so to speak, and then they do these redemptive acts in their lives and then they they pass, right? So now we have a character that has... This, we get to explore that 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 avenue of where does this character go after you know what how do they 
how do they face themselves afterwards? How do they move on, right? She has to go on her own hero's journey right now, so to speak. So those are some great moments, at least from from that episode alone, uh, part six. Part five, I love the Anakin Obi-Wan flashback from episode, uh, you know. It, yeah. It takes place a little bit before episode two, canon-wise, and it's the way that that scene breaks down and it, it's to, to get an understanding of how Anakin Darth Vader works as a person, right? He, he's passionate. He gets he gets focused too much on one thing alone. His motivation for victory doesn't allow him to see the larger picture around him, and that's his true fault, and he never learns that until the very end, even. Uh, lo- love that, love that. And, of course, uh, Obi-Wan reclaiming himself again. I, it was a big fist pump moment in Part 4 where he's using the Force again to uh, kind of hold back the the water, and you can just see, like, the coming back in Obi-Wan. He does a wonderful triumphant stance with his lightsaber again. I just got the sense that, old, <laughs> that, that, that Ewan McGregor is back in 100% as Obi- Obi-Wan Kenobi again. It, t- it took a couple episodes. It cook, took him getting beaten into, into fire and, and recovering through a little bit of Bacta and struggling with his emotions and all that. Big, big stand for me. And, of course, the side characters, too. I mean, Roken, Tala, Ned B, Haja... They, Rava, all the Inquisitors, they they were big standouts. So again, I'm mm. very very passionate about what this show has done and overall. So we could talk for hours literally about this. We yeah. could do it part yeah. by part, frankly. Yeah. If you ask me. <laughs> so you mentioned a lot of things that stood out to me. I, don't know, but, I mean, what about you, Mimi? Before I jump in, what do you? I just think Star Wars plays with the blue and the red a lot, and yeah. we're kind. Of, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself again. Um, and I wish they play with it a little bit more in Galaxy's Edge, like visually, mm. which is like kind of kind of weird but like they do it so much in everything else that they produce i think it'd be really cool to see that like take a more like tangible sense in the park anyway that would um be great I, I noticed i just like the one thing that really stands out to me which is kind of it might be a criticism but i don't understand fully why we were supposed to be super upset about Holland's death like Mm -hmm. it was written and set up like we were supposed to it was supposed to be a big emotional moment for the audience and it was like we've known her half an episode like or an episode and a half like and it that kind of stood out to me as like this weird sort of moment but like the end redemption character art the question that I have with that is like but is can she train to be a Jedi now because like that's what she was doing when she was taken. So, like, where does this go? Like, the question is really, like, where does this go? But, like, does she have the potential to go complete, like, 180? Or, like, what's going on? Like, I don't know. That's kind of the big question yeah. that you had, too. Yeah, that was a big... The Reva ending was a mm-hmm. big question for me because... Um, so, Vader and the Inquisitor, Grand Inquisitor left her behind. Yeah. They... I think assumed she probably didn't die. Maybe they think she did, but you have to imagine she's got injured the same way the Grand Inquisitor did, and, and you know the whole you know revenge or anger will sustain you, right? So. Oh yeah, that's a great line guess, in our household guess, right now. <laughs> yeah, and I guess part of the question I had about her, because I, I told Mimi before the six, before the final episode, I said there are two things that have to happen in my mind in the last episode. One, something has to happen to Kenobi to force Vader to no longer fixate on hunting him down. Mm-hmm. Because by the time A New Hope comes around, Vader is not looking for Obi-Wan anymore. Like He yeah. has moved on to other things completely. He's not even hunting other Jedi. As far as he yeah. knows, all the Jedi are gone. Um, the second thing was Reva, that I didn't see how she could remain present knowing that Luke that there was this important boy that Obi-Wan was guarding on Tatooine and had this knowledge and would be allowed to remain because mm-hmm. of the secrecy behind all this because you I assume she was going to flip but then now you're open to being hunted down again by inquisitors captured forced yeah. to talk and now you're going to give up the ghost, so to speak, um, on Luke. Well, now you're and like so. A I was I was sitting there right. So I'm sitting there going. I told Mimi, I think she's going to 
I mean, Obi-Wan's going to kill her. Someone's going to have to mm. dispose of her. She's going to have, something's going to have to happen. Someone has to silence her. Right. Basically. She has to be silenced. Right. Like, it's like a mobster movie, right? Somebody's got to quiet <laughs> silence this one. Right. Yeah. And something has to throw, um, Vader off of Obi-Wan's tail. Right. Mm-hmm. And we also knew that Vader and Obi-Wan were going to fight. And I didn't think Reva and Obi-Wan were going to fight. In the second, there's too many. For one episode, it's just too many. Too too much. Yeah, I agree. Right. (laughs) So when and this is a big thing for me because Mimi will tell you when it happened. I went Baru because it's like (laughs) Baru was like Rambo. Oh yeah, she was a bad mother. I mean, she was ready to fight. Right. True justice for Baru. Yeah. Baru was like I was like. Yes, because you know Owen kind of fell and he did his he tried, but Baru was like she was ready. She was she was going full Terminator mode. She said, right? It's time to get the guns out. We gotta protect. Right. We and gotta she, protect. <laughs> she's like, we're not playing here. You know, we're this is what we're doing, right? So uh, I thought something was gonna happen and Rava was gonna, you know, die trying to get to Luke or or mm-hmm. one thing we mentioned was when she went looking for him, Mimi and I both looked at each other and said a Tuscan raider is going to get her. No, that's what I said. I was like, all of this Ooh. is in a, ra- in a Tuscan raider. Right, because she's like, because they said, why? She's just like the- walking around. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool if she just gets sniped by a Tuscan raider? I was going to say, the one from Boba right? Fett just, just coming right. along by. Right, <laughs> So we were, those How were two. How Luke survived them? Like, that's a completely other thing. But, but like. That, but, so that was, that was one question I had in the end, because they have to, somewhere, that's maybe in Andor, or maybe somewhere along the road, they'll have, They'll have to allude to her being involved somewhere. Sure. Yeah. Because it's too, it's just too open. The other thing was, and and I go back to what you mentioned about um, Vader saying, you know, you didn't, you know, kill Anakin. I did. The only thing that I wish they would have done there, and maybe mm-hmm. I misheard it, and I think this would have made it 10% more impactful, mm-hmm. was when he said, I did if the voice modulator would have changed to Vader's voice. Ooh, ooh, that'd be and cool. And it didn't. From what I remember, it was still Anakin's voice. Yeah, probably. Yeah, he said, so. don't worry, Obi-Wan, you didn't kill Anakin. I did. And if I did, would have come back as Vader's voice through the modulator, I would have been like, okay, that's, mm-hmm. now it's done, ooh. right? Now we know exactly what it is. So that was... The big question is really, like, what happens with, Reva, because she's got all this information about Luke. And related to that, and it's all not... these other apparent Jedi and Force sensitives that are kind of floating around <laughs> out there, where where have they been for Wait, the past what are you guys, what are you guys up to? 10 years? So maybe the Inquisitors did a really, really good job <laughs> after <laughs> Obi-Wan. With the exception of Ed, Ezra Bridger, who will come along, Rebels. Right. I mean, Mimi didn't, didn't, didn't in the Rebels. But, mm-hmm. and, and Ahsoka... Yeah. There's like where the, there's obviously I, you know, like hundreds of you guys. They like, weren't on indoor see. flashing their lightsabers at, at the end nope. of Turn of the Jedi. No, and it's not like they're helping the rebellion out at you know in Rogue One. There, the Bail Organa is like, it's time to call out the big guns. Got to got to contact the Jedi. <laughs> right, 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 right. So that something, and I'm glad. Look, this is good because they introduce these things. It creates questions. Right, and none of these questions are like right. critical questions. Uh, and yes, so too. they're like they're intrigued you know, questions. Right. Meanwhile, Kathleen Kennedy's checking her Twitter feed on what people are saying or the problems. Like, okay, we're going to greenlight a series about this, right? Because this exactly. is what everybody's talking about. Exactly. You know, it, that's the great thing about the the Disney takeover of Star Wars, right? Is that there are avenues for continuous storytelling everywhere. And I think right. the the Rava question that you bring up is is really is it's a solid one, and that's. Something that I would like to see explored even further, like what does she do after this moment? How does she respond to this? How does she, what, what does she do to survive, right? I mean, in my opinion, in my headcanon that I'm kind of developing here, the other Inquisitors never really respected her or gave her the light of day. That's why she had to work so hard in order to climb up that ladder. And even when she did climb up the ladder, it's just the nature of the dark side is you're always trying to one-up somebody in order to keep progressing further. So once they, you know stabbed her in, in part five and walked away. I, I think that was kind of their bookend on that. They're like, if she lives, she barely lives, right? If, uh, you know, she, she dies, she dies. Like, we're moving on. We're, we're closing this door on her. We're, we're walking away on this one. Um, that's kind of how I, I envisioned it. So I don't think they're hunting her down in any way, shape, or form. Unless, I mean, 
another takeaway that I forgot to mention was I did like the Grand Inquisitor a lot. I did love his line, revenge does wonders for the will to live. We've been saying that in our house for like the last right. week, week and a half now. Pretty, pretty, <laughs> said, pretty a lot. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I mean, I would maybe, you know, speculate in here. What about a series of those two hunting each other? Like maybe he becomes known to her and he's like, hmm, she did stab me. I'm going to, I got to get back on her for this one. Right. And, you know, it's, it's up to her for really where she goes with right now. I, I, I'm not sure if she'll continue like trying to become a force user gun or if she just has to regain her own humanity in some regards, shape or form. I would love to see where Roken goes as a character. O'Shea Jackson Jr. who mm-hmm. did a wonderful job playing this great leader who I hope in some way, shape or form is is in the rebellion, right? I hope he for nine years later is at the Battle of Scarif in some way, shape or form or on, you know, on Endor at, at uh, Return of the Jedi. Would I love agree. that just to know all that. Um, I did I like think... his character. I did like his character a lot. I thought that was a good, a good character to introduce. I have a weird sense of humor. Part of me just wishes <laughs> that when Obi Wan walks away and is is outside of like earshot and Rava's son is just saying, there going, okay, uh, now what do I do? I'm s- sitting on the sand in front of the uh, Lars, you know, hut. You know, part of me. Uh, <laughs> The weird sense of humor in me is like Baru just comes back with a blaster and shoots her <laughs> and says, I still don't trust that one. Right. It's like, like, we don't have to worry about that one anymore. Right. Owen, get, get a, get a sack. Right. We got to yep. take care of this one. Right. Baru's not playing games anymore. Anyone Baru gets close not to, playing. The, to the, to the, to the homestead. Playing. She's like, I got to defend my home. <laughs> I think it, like, obviously rebels exist, but like, I think it'd be really interesting to get us not maybe like a full series, but like a mini series on the inner workings of the rebellion, like the regular people, not mm. not the not the cool people, the regular people. Like, what are they doing? Like, because they just pop up at, at the Jedi's convenience, and they're like, okay, we need a we need a ship and a bunch of blasters, and they're like, okay. And it's like, but what the, what else are you guys doing? Like, what are you, what are you rebelling against? It's like, well, you're not actually doing any work. So it's like, what are you doing? But you kind of moving on from that. You alluded to something really interesting about the Disney Lucasfilm takeover, which gets a, which obviously gets a lot of backlash, especially since the sequel trilogy was not great. I don't think it was bad, but it, it wasn't, it wasn't the original ones. And you, I think you bring up a really interesting point. Like they've Disney has kind of like fixed itself and worked out how to manage Lucasfilm, especially with like the, man, with the smash hit that was Mandalorian and mm-hmm. Obi-Wan being fantastic and even Bad Batch, which I didn't like, but a lot of people did. And like Boba Fett, which was successful. Um, Disney, Disney taking over Lucasfilm, like creates so much like vaster of, of a resource to do kind of whatever they want. And I don't think enough people realize that. And I'm really glad that you said it because I haven't thought about it until you like put it into words like Lucasfilm probably would not be able to be doing Star Wars the way Disney is doing Star Wars right now because like yeah there's tons of money Lucasfilm literally millions and millions and millions of dollars in Lucasfilm but Disney already has everything they could possibly buy Disney is bigger than Lucasfilm totally. and it's that's a like really interesting perspective yeah absolutely I mean D- Disney didn't pay four billion not to get a return on investment there, right? right. <laughs> like the great nonprofit that is the Walt Disney Company uh, <laughs> didn't want to make money. And, the the day. and Mimi mentioned the sequels. I mean, look, they will have their day in ten to twenty years. Oh, absolutely, yeah. In in ten to twenty years, just like the ones that you grew up with, these kids will say, hey, where's my series about, you know, Babu Frick? Or where's my, where's my, you know, um, Adventures of Ray or whatever it is, right? And I think that will come in time because those movies were, I, I, there's too much to say about them for one episode of this show, certainly. (laughs) But what what I would say is in many ways, they did, they did one of two things, in my opinion. They either played it extremely safe mm-hmm. or they shot so far for something really different. And people, it gave people to, two reasons to be critical. It was, I've seen this already. This is nothing new. Mm-hmm. Or 
this has nothing, this doesn't even feel at all like anything that I was expecting it to be. Which and is so, funny because now we're getting shows like Mandalorian, yeah, which right. are really like nothing anyone has ever seen before. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like something that is totally original. Right. And like, this kind of goes into like the generational thing that you and I talk about on the show sometimes. Your generation didn't like the prequels. Your generation did. Your generation really? doesn't like the sequels. Mine does. Like there's like, it just <laughs> connects with the different people, right? Because like nothing is going to beat the classic, but the classic is what you know. I know the sequel is much better than you know the original trilogy in the way you know the prequels. So it's like, like everyone just wants to be like, okay, but it's it's not it's not a new hope. And I'm like, it will not ever be a new hope ever again. Like you've got to move on from that. Like right. something will be new, something will be different. You're gonna get a female lead. Get over it. Yep. You can cry a little bit, but that's okay. You're gonna have to get over it at some point. And there's just there's just that like that's what it is. Like there's gonna be you're right like in 10 20 years everyone's gonna be like okay but like i want to bend solo series and every, and your daughter's gonna be like what <laughs> hey i'm for it <laughs> hey you know so, so anthony we're about 40 minutes in we have this conversation is going great but i also want to be respectful of your time um <laughs> And this is a question I don't you, you feel free to think about it, right? Okay. I certainly I have an answer, right? This is a question I have an answer to already. But you know, Disney Plus has come out with um a number of good programs, Star Wars related stuff, whether it's the final season of Clone Wars, Mandalorian, mm. Bad Batch, Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan, right? And of course they have the stuff coming up, which we can't really comment on yet, but I know everyone's really excited for Ahsoka yeah. and Andor and all that good stuff that's happening. Um, but thinking of the, the Disney plus content that's come out in the last couple of years, um, I'd be curious. And, I, and Mimi, I want you to think of this too, because I want to share mine, maybe one scene or one episode of something that you felt was the most, uh, impactful from star mm. Wars lore. Mm. And then maybe a, an anticipated sort of, um, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like not a storyline, but maybe a plot twist or something that didn't happen that you were like, I, I hope they do this or I hope this happens mm. and it didn't happen. Um, mm. I'll go first. I'll give you time to think, right? Okay. It, Thank you. Just give you a good example of what I'm talking <laughs> about, right? My, and I, to this moment, if this music comes on, I will go into a trance, right? I think the final scene of the final Clone Wars episode mm. where they bury the troopers and then Vader shows up and that music, the burying the dead music that's played, oh, that yeah. whole thing, there's no dialogue. I, to this day get the chills even thinking about that scene because it is simple it is efficient and it is enormously impactful mm. and if you're a star wars fan yeah my so that would be my 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 impact piece the piece that i was hoping i was really hoping that this would happen and i kind of knew in my heart it wasn't going to happen and mimi will know exactly what i'm talking about when i mention this i was hoping beyond hope that book of Boba Fett would be revealed that it was not Boba Fett <laughs> coming out of the Sarlacc, that it mm. was Captain Rex Ooh. who was trying to find, he had heard that his, the, the alpha clone, the, the original, the Boba Fett, which essentially his, the, the pristine version of Django was still possibly alive on Tatooine. And that he went to Tatooine to search for this guy and that the whole book mm. of Boba Fett was Rex assuming the persona of Boba Fett to try to discover what this guy lived through at the end of Rex's like re This is Rex's last mission is to find the last of his brothers, which was Boba. And he goes and learns this story. And that's why Boba wasn't really a bad guy, right? He was right, saving people. And I was like, well, Captain Rex would save people, right? 
And I was, I was like, God, that would be so cool if at the end you realize Ahsoka shows up and you realize it's really not Boba. He is mm. dead in the Sarlacc pit or whatever. He mm. died on the sand with the Tuscans. This is Rex, not Boba. That mm. was, and it didn't happen, of course. But I was like, oh, that would be so cool. You've thought this through, I can tell. I thought this through. <laughs> there was a whole yeah. video. Yeah, I made a little video. I, I had like a five point list. I think like, this is why this guy is wrecked. He's not Boba. Boom, 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 boom. Then, of course, it's not true. But I, I love this theory. I, I, I'm happy that was my to explore theory. this even further. And, and the jury's still out, frankly. I mean, you never still be Rex at the end of the day. We don't, we don't know. He could just be using a pseudo name, Boba Fett. <laughs> I, I, you never know that name comes a with a price yeah. <laughs> and there's a price exactly. to pay to use that name oh, totally totally mimi um, do you have a favorite a moment and in, in give anthony a second to think I a think, little more i think when luke comes in and saves the child at the end of mandalorian that's a good one i think because mm-hmm. everyone knew but everyone was still absolutely the cat yeah. everyone is still everyone was still like the real you and i like screamed like, we jumped up we're like oh my god it's luke oh my god and like we knew he was gonna be in it like it was literally teased at the beginning of the season but you but didn't we know how like, good it was gonna but be we're like oh he, he's here and like it was like i don't know it's luke the classic the og he was there and was for the cool. first time in a long time um my anticipatory moment any theory Anything with Ahsoka, more <laughs> give me more Ahsoka. Like I just, like she was in both Mandalorian and Boba Fett, like as a feature, mm-hmm. and obviously she wasn't going to be an Obi Wan, an Obi Wan, but like more of her. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> that show coming out when it was supposed to. That that's my anticipatory moment. Oh yeah. Oh, supposed yeah. Supposed to come oh, out yeah. this year, yeah. and it did not. But that's okay. Yeah. It's fine. Holding out. Hey, yeah. when it comes, it's going to be glorious. Let me tell yeah. you. I, what I, about I, you, I, Anthony? What? Are, what are your thoughts? So along the same line, the moment that really like got me very emotional, got me going and all that stuff, I was not expecting it whatsoever, was first the moment in The Mandalorian Season 2 when Bo-Katan is like, you know, see- seek out Ahsoka Tano, right? That was a big moment for me just, you know, growing up with the, the Clone Wars TV series, of course. And then, I don't know, it, up until maybe you know 2017 2019 right it always felt like to some degree that the movies and t- it just seemed like there was separate canon and verse right like yeah I agree. as a star wars fan until maul shows up in in uh, at the end of solo right it's like the clone wars were great as a fan to add to the canon give you more time with the characters maybe understand their motivations a bit more but the actual events of those fil- of those episodes you know and the plot lines discussed in there didn't really seem to have an impact on what else was happening so it didn't make it must see things for casual fans and stuff like that and now after the mall thing of course like i was like okay this is exciting where where is the next step here what what is next right and little did i know that it would be Ahsoka actually coming into the fall. I mean, of course, Bo-Katan too is another example of that coming into play, but I had a feeling with another Mandalorian, you know, it it made more sense than a Jedi (laughs) coming into play. Right. So just hearing her name at first was such a big plot twist for me that we were, I was literally basically running around my house, geeking out about how epic the possibilities of this was exactly. And then seeing her in the entire episode that she has, the Jedi, the whole episode is devoted to her basically. And, that they at the end, where is Grand Admiral Thrawn, right? Oh, Rebels is now yeah. more important than ever, and all these people have to go watch this stuff, and the conversations can continue. This was so exciting to me. Uh, and then to the second part there, uh, what is something that I was kind of speculating on, uh, what I kind of wished would have happened, is kind of along similar lines in, in Boba Fett, I was kind of hoping that uh, Jabba might have survived uh, mm. from, from Return of the Jedi that we got would have gotten to see how Jabba slithered his way across the desert and had to regain his power <laughs> once again. And then that could have led to Jabba stories and a Godfather-esque tale of him reclaiming his glory and his throne, trying to hunt down Boba. You know, I, that was something that I had. I'm very happy with the Boba Fett show that we got. So no, no, no quarrels there, but would love yeah. to see some more Jabba and Hutt stories. I know they introduced the twins in uh, the book of Boba Fett. So let's see more Hutt stories. Nal Hutta, let's let's go there. Let's explore all that. I so agree. Like a Boba Fett, Jabba the Hutt, like like deep dive. Like what actually is going on with right. them? 
totally yeah. Not. Bo- yeah some bounty hunter stories that are more serial and with, they're not with, related with to anything cool. else they're yeah. not related to anything empirical they're nothing dark side related it's just like totally completely separate from everything else that's been given to us it has no overlapping story it has nothing to do with any jedi no mandalorian it's just it's just <laughs> that it's just right. what it is like well, look, growing up on abc i remember a show the fall guy with lee majors Ooh, yeah. he was a stunt man but he was also <laughs> a bounty hunter so when he wasn't doing stunts for movies he was bounty hunting right mm, we need yeah. a show like that but set in the star wars universe where you know by by night i'm a bounty hunter but during the day i'm I'm a band player. I'm at the That's the Mandalorian. Right? Okay, whatever. Right. It's all good. Well, listen, Anthony, we could go on and on and on. There's so much There's to talk so much about, to talk and about. we've enjoyed visiting with you so, so much. You know, we're certainly going to have to do this another time to talk more about Star Wars. Of course, you're always welcome to come back on the show and, and dive into these things. Um, well, maybe not every week, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, when Star Wars comes, we'd love to have you on again. But before we go, please, please tell everybody who's listening how they can find Force Ghost Conversations and follow you on the socials and online. Absolutely. Well, thank you for again for having me on the show. This has been such a blast, and I will definitely take you up on any offer to come back on and chat Star Wars with you both. It's been a real pleasure. You can find Force Ghost Conversations anywhere that podcasts are found, basically Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, you name it. If there's a podcast site that you enjoy, we're probably there in some way, shape, or form. You can follow us on all the social media channels, whether that be Twitter at Force Ghost Pod or Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Just search Force Ghost Conversations and we'll be there in some capacity. Very good. Very good. Well, Anthony, thanks for coming on. Be well. Uh, I know you've been a little under the weather. We hope that you, you recover <laughs> soon and get out there. Been and they've done that. <laughs> yeah. And I guess what what's the uh, the proper farewell from from uh, Galaxy's Edge? I'm a yeah. five till, on a scale of one to ten. Till the spire. Till the spire. That's right. Till the spire. Thank you, sir. <laughs>